Hey everyone, Wanderpod here, and welcome to Survivors of the Dawn, a bullet heaven that attempts to mix Vampire Survivors uh, standard gameplay and weaponization with Risk of Rain itemization and power-ups, which sounds interesting. I'm curious to see where this goes. Uh, looks like we have easy, hard, and brutal. What happened to the normal? Oh. Alright, we've also got to slay the Spire map. So we could go shopping, but that's meaningless. So I think we're going to go up to enemy, and then unknown, treasure, unknown. We'll make it work. Oh, those sound effects are going to need to go down immediately. We're going to turn off screen shake too, because... Yeah, I'm not keen on those. Okay, so we've got control for auto-aim. Oh, that's nice. I know some people, this is kind of a deal breaker, and I'm much the same way. I like it when I'm able to aim. I also like it when I'm not able to aim. Different games have kind of different strengths and weaknesses on this. Uh, let's see. Laser sabers to multiple directions with a, a rain, range of return. Oh, boomerang. Or 25% extra EXP. I think these runs go a little long. So I think we want to go for the EXP gain. Okay. Man dying. Wheel of laser beams rotates around the player. I like that. Yeah, let's go for that. That's some nice uh, coverage. Oh, we also have objectives. Melee attack speed. Main weapon... Harper Drone's Mech Scout. Is my shotgun actually... I have no idea. I think I'm going to go for the pickup range, frankly. What is this? Bounty found. Execute any enemy on hit if its HP is lower than 8%. Freeze chance 5% when damaged. Or 10% attack damage on enemy with a 10% chance. Let's just go for the raw damage. I don't know if we're going to benefit from freeze, but a chance of doing damage seems like a good idea. Armory. Okay, big ups on actually having stuff going on here. Uh, let's go for crit chance. Oh. Attack speed and pierce. Okay, so armories are shops. So are those? Ah, these, these yellow things are money. Oh, looks like we also have auto battle. Oh, uh, auto battler unit, unit families, upgrade families. Cooldowns. No, we have the laser beam. I don't know if that's going to help. Now, dude, can I see how many families I have? I don't. I know we have Brutal. Okay, so I've got two Exorcist, one Saboteur, and one Brutal. So I guess we want to pursue Exorcist if we can. Ah, uh, you know what? I'm gonna go for Swift's Ride, though. Brutal's pretty achievable at the moment. Let's actually go over here. Oh, Salvage? I don't want to go into Armories until I have at least, like, 2,000-something EX, uh, EXP money. Credit income by 25%. Sure. I'm just gonna try and mix and match until I have a little bit of everything. Ah, uh, oh, even my weapon counts. These are all level two. Let's go for the laser beam. This so ooh. The game didn't like that. I might have to turn the side effects completely off. Uh, let's see. One, two, or three. I think I'm just gonna keep working on the laser beam. We'll just get that maxed out. Looks like we've got a lot of salvage here. Uh, let's see. Chance to reset weapon cooldowns per hit enemy. Five second cooldown. One percent chance per stack. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go for Vendetta. Let's see. And I'm here for... Oh. Never mind. This is a mistake. We shouldn't do it. I'm not going to survive long enough to get there. We want to go to the armory. Uh, let's see. Attack speed? Looks like it gets progressively more expensive. Okay. Uh, let's see. Go to the unknown? Absolutely. So we need to really book for these objectives. Oh, I see a gold one over here. This also means going for movement speed probably matters a lot. Distress call received. Oh god, that's a lot. Okay, let's, um... Gain 5,000 credits, lose 2% max HP. I can work with that. That's 20 HP overall. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry I ain't gonna read all that. I wish I could. Uh, let's see. Uh, shop prices, 10% discount? Sure. 
My enemies are going to be tough, but I'm just not going to allow them to get at me. Okay, this, this already feels reasonably better. Okay, short range weapon that launches grenades at enemies. It is an exorcist weapon, sure. So we now have the full exorcist perk, which I should have probably paid attention to what it does, but that's okay. All right, we've got an item over here. Uh, let's see, exorcist. Movement and attack speed for a limited time. Got it. Uh, let's see. Frankly, I'm actually gonna go for movement speed. We need to be able to get around here and grab a lot of stuff quickly. Attack damage per enemy killed, uh, yes. That kind of flat gain is nice, especially if it's independence of most of my other upgrades. Okay, so we're cruising now. And I, I don't exactly know how Exorcist functions, but it seems like the movement speed and especially if the attack speed is scaling like absurdly fast. We might need some weapon pierce and some other things. Ow. Okay, more attack damage, more projectile, absolutely. Okay, unit for harbor drones, reset weapon cooldowns, or attack for enemies, yes. I don't actually know how that one stacks exactly. Does it double the potential cap? I hope it does. Okay, can I kill all of these and still reach an armory? I think so, yes. And it looks like the kills only, uh, the kills count if I'm standing inside of it. It doesn't actually matter Let's see. Max HP increases the enemy dies within a two meter radius. This is what I was looking for. I am dying. I'm just going to do this. I don't think we can go shopping. Let's do bounty chest. Okay, grab the money. Rush the armory. Okay, projectile count and projectile speed. Uh, does that give me another beam? I think it might, which is kind of nutty. Do we go for the treasure? Absolutely. There's a shop up there, so we might want to go for that. Now, it looks like treasure wave is just a bunch of crystals. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like my lasers. Do my lasers? Yeah, my lasers don't break crystals, which is a bit of a downer. Oh, good. I'm back up to full HP. Okay. And I'm just going to keep becoming a progressively goofier wheel of death. Yeah, I'd like to visit more of those random event things. Let's see. I'm just going to make wheel of death good. I'm not really getting the risk of rain itemization yet. I guess it's kind of the armory. It's mostly just uh, passive scaling. Oh, and we're here for three minutes and we have to kill a boss. Works for me. Uh, I'm just gonna keep working on movement speed right now. Ooh, we might also wanna look into some means of healing. As in retrospect, I have none. Okay, luckily the boss just seems to be a uh, big dude. Big dude that easily stuck on the, um, the pillar. Unfortunately, most of my damage... Okay. Grizzly Fee is interesting, but no, this one. It's an extra projectile for the grenade launcher, ballistic knives, laser saber, and missile launcher. However, we don't get that upgrade for five minutes. Still worth it. Okay, I'm gonna actually go for the laser beam considering everything here. And am I stuck in this cage match against this guy until he's dead? I think so. 
Luckily, it seems like my uh, my shotgun cooldown is pretty short. Critter is dead. I guess boss is almost dead. Let's do something about that. Let me go EXP gain. EXP gain. Uh, let's see. We already have Exorcist. So, do we want to get a Ballistic Knives? I think I'll go for that. Let's go for Beast Fang. Work on a couple of these. Okay. What is that health? Oh, blessed be. Okay, last wave. Fortunately, there's not a lot of enemies. There's a lot of money. So there's the, kind of the question of, is this worth it? I don't see any of the yellow events here. Okay. Keep working on the laser sphere. Being overpowered. I think it's better to go for these kill X towers than it is to go for um, the salvage. I don't actually think I have any basis in that yet. The salvage just always seems like it takes a while. I guess this does too, so big question. We don't have any armories, do we? I'm gonna max out my EXP gain. No, I ain't gonna get that. Yeah, salvage is too slow, so I think I'm just gonna run around looking for money. Unfortunately, I'm looking for money in places I've already been, which is maybe not the most practical. It's fine. I think we're doing okay. So, unknown enemy... Oh, but this says it's the shop. We want to go for the shop. Now, it doesn't seem like there's an upper limit on how much I can grab. So, what's my max HP at? 1,001. So it does go up. Huh. Okay, attack damage and fire rate. Oh, those only affect my main weapon. Now this isn't something I can destroy. No, it doesn't look like it. It's probably too late, but I might as well increase my credit income. Okay, let's pop these open. It says they only affect my main weapon, though. Maybe not quite as good. Okay, right. Leave these alone for a hot second, go back over here. Especially because I have to kill 400 enemies for this one to pop open. I'm not sure if we're going to get that. Okay, projectiles, crit chance. What is my crit chance? 13. Ah, uh, sure. I do like the fact that it generally gives us what we already have, rather than something new. Too many bullet heavens are specifically like, I know you're trying to max out your crit chance, but have you heard the word of movement speed? Oh, max out the laser beam. It always feels kind of awkward in that situation, especially if you don't have rerolls or banishes. Uh, I'm gonna go for the pickup radius. Luckily, leveling up comes with just a little bit of pushback. What did I give me? Nothing. Let's just grab the money. There's an armory there, but we can always pursue them later. I want to make sure I unequivocally have enough for the shop. I should be on a lookout for those nests. Okay, so it's my bet. Shop just has, like, oodles of armories. I'm possibly wrong on this. Maybe it just triggers at the end? I have no idea. Oh, 
Well, I guess I'm just gonna hang out here in the super safety circle and just not worry about it. My max HP gains get reset. I'm not sure if I'm keen on that. I was really hoping... Yeah, I could actually see that being a design oversight, frankly. Because, yeah, I notice every time I, I come back here, I'm at 1,000 EX... Or 1,000 HP. Which means I can trade it away freely. I'm just going to get some... A kind of big pickup radius. So I'm noticing the Slay the Monster spots don't seem to give me um, perks as much anymore. But maybe Salvage is a little bit more worth it. Hard to kind of say on that one. Okay. Ballistic Day. Knife damage up by a lot. Yeah, that's kind of worth it. Okay. 10% credit refund at shops. Yeah, I think we're going to work our way over here, get the event really quick, and then start popping open as many armories as we can. Uh, Just go for more credits. Oh, there's the shop. Okay, so we can actually buy stuff. Uh, let's see. Attack speed for staying still. Chance to drop a bomb on nearby enemies. I'm gonna just go for that. We're just gonna pretty much clear the place out. Is it the best? I don't know. Yeah, so it's the salvage that really follows the risk of rain itemization. I guess it's not so bad. Uh, do we want to get the missile launcher? Oh, but they're already exorcist. But no. We're looking for saboteur and brutal. We might also have to, like, unlock those or something. Do I have enough for one more of these? Possibly. I guess I'm going to start working on my credit gain. There, and I think I should be able to get just enough here. Maybe. Boy, there's a lot of these boys. Oh, laser sabers. So in multiple directions, range of return, and it is brutal. I think I've actually seen it trigger yet, but that might just be a me thing. Go for crit chance. Wait. Bounty upgrade. Uh, let's see. HP restored for every damage taken. Tempting. I think we're going to go for the Beast Muffler, though. I seem to be doing fine, so let's just go for pickup range. Damage per killed enemy. Uh, don't have enough for much. We can go shopping again, though. I think these are cheaper. We'll go for the attack speed. The projectile count. Upgrade is kind of expensive. Okay, can't afford too much, but we're doing fine. Uh, treasure? Treasure! Because we know treasure is pretty damn good. I think I might even just ignore everything and just clean sweep the money.
Because now we know we can go to shops and burn, like, tens of thousands really quickly. We might as well go nuts with it. Oh, let's go for movement speed. The faster I am, the more money I can acquire here. Yeah, 662? No. If it was, like, 100, I might stick around. I don't think I'm even going to stick around for the salvage. We are full capitalism hoe territory right now. Which reminds me, I should probably do... Oh, my money has disappeared. Weird. I should probably do a video on Reketeer at some point. Probably play through it off the... Oh. Are you the boss? No, you're the boss. I don't know if I can kill the circle, but I can say okay. I can certainly kill the boss. Keep going movement speed. Crit uh movement speed crit chance. Uh and trader's wallet. Money game. Do we go for it? No, I'm already like halfway on the salvage and it seems like a lot of the money has disappeared. Let's see. I'm going to keep going for the credit gain and the refund. I don't know if armories count. I hope they do. Oh, it regenerates 1 HP per second. That's a welcome boon. There's some money. Unfortunately, it seems like the treasure just kind of up and disappears after a certain point. I think they limit you. I almost kind of wish the... the... treasure... treasure tier? Uh... was actually like a, um... Oh, how would I describe it? It was like a mining drill or something you had to defend. I think that'd actually be really cool. I'm going to keep working on the uh, refund whenever we get the opportunity. Because I really like the idea... Okay. Uh, I really like the idea of just buying out whole shops without having to worry. I'm going to just kill the sound effects. Just too many bleepity bloops and not nearly enough payoff. Sometimes sound effects are kind of cool. Not here. Not really a knock against the game. I hope. Uh, let's keep doing Vendetta. We might want to snag Processor just for the sake of it. Uh, just to get it out of the pool. Because it keeps showing up and we kind of don't have much of a choice on that. There we go. Well, this feels reasonably satisfying and effective. Uh, let's see. Let's probably do both unknowns and then the shop. But I think I might go out of my way to do some shopping here. If it's good. Because I'm noticing uh, those don't scale in cost. Also, I don't think I've ever seen teal. Let's get our ballistic knives up. Oh, teal is a missing item. Got it. Okay, crystals, crystal magnet, chance. Shop prices go up by 5%, but we already get a big old discount. I mean, I have to buy the first one, but then I can just buy the rest. Okay. What is this one? Bounty chest per enemy drop rate, enemy movement speed increase. Sure. Because I think the bounty chests are the, the perks, the items, which we want as much as we possibly can get out of those. And yeah, my shotgun is actually getting pretty good. 
more of a spread fire gun at this point than a shotgun per se. I was really hoping we get more upgrades that specifically benefit, oh, uh, assassinate elite enemies on hit. No, I think I'm gonna just execute regular enemies. I'm not really one-shotting them, I'm kind of burning them down. I wonder if the discount actually applies, or if it's shops only. Find out. Oh, projectile count. You know, I don't think we need that. I... The, the, uh, the discount, the, uh, refund works on armories. Nah. I really need the magnets. 50 attack damage, more projectiles. Heck yeah. I was hoping more of my upgrades would specifically apply to my my side guns. They currently don't scale in an interesting fashion. It's purely just like more until they get really strong and that's it. Ah, oh, less enemy health, but faster enemies. Nah. Wait, I thought I'd maxed my knives. Be an interesting problem if it doesn't max out. Okay, I'm gonna keep going for those bounty chest pulls. Because I see that having a lot of potential. Okay, another unknown. Oh, unknowns are full of events. Go figure. Alright. Ooh. Let's increase the enemy spawn multiplier. What could go wrong with more enemies? Uh, honestly, I'm betting nothing. I'm kind of clobbering. I'm just going to increase the credit drop chance. Though we are getting to the point where we don't need to do that. But I'm gonna do it anyway, because whatever, who cares? I'm overpowered. Okay. Ah! 10% discount at shops. It'll offset some of what I was messing with earlier, and, and speaking of shops, actually go shopping. Uh, let's see. Sure, I'll buy the processor. Not that it's helpful, but it gets it out of the pool. Oh, and we did drop a bounty chest. I'll go back for it. Two, in fact. Sure. Yeah, that discount is massive, in fact. Sure. So I heal HP per enemy killed. And I regenerate more HP per second. Works for me! That bounty chest up is really nice. Yeah, so we might actually want to just stack that as much as we can possibly get it up to. Just keep looking for events, because I can always say no. I'm just going to do shops have available stuff, or... Lead enemy health increased by 15%. Set a trap. I have no idea. Yeah, so exploit unknowns. If you've, if you've got the uh, strength to do it. Nah. Not that one, though. We are uneasy, that is the one thing to say. I wonder if I've actually hit the cap. Because I've seen that event before. 
No. Okay. It's expensive, but it's not heinously so. I just want to get my my bullet hose up to strong hose tier. I haven't really felt like Medallion of Grudge is working. But I could be wrong on that. I'm just going to work for the any enemy on hit. We don't have that many elites. Yeah, I know those objectives, I want to say, are probably the source of most of my money. Eh, no. They were earlier. Okay. More enemy spawns. Absolutely. We assuredly don't have enough enemies spawning. I need more of them. I'm just going to do projectile speed and range. Let's see. Movement speed boost when HP is low, which isn't really that helpful. Let's see. Just to reset cooldowns. Worth it. Bounty chest. And despite the fact that I've boosted their move speed a lot, most of these enemies are kind of comically slow. Maybe it's because I'm knocking them back. I think they're also just never supposed to be particularly fast. And I'm slightly breaking their spawns. Yeah, unfortunately we're not making a whole lot of money here, but it's fine. Okay, I think that's good enough. We'll save the rest for shopping in the next tier. I got like 10 seconds left. I do kill a lot really quickly. So like, maybe I could get up here and do this one. No. Oh, that's a thousand enemies. I read it as a hundred and I was like, hundred's easy. Thousand's not. Okay, shopping. And then boss. This is reasonably satisfying. I wish the, um, how would I describe it? Who even care about the armory? Not really, no. My main weapon has gotten hyper-busted. All enemies, eh. I'm trying to find the shop shop. I'll buy an item, though. I don't think I'm actually going to be able to utilize that, tragically. Ooh, that has even more. But they're all expensive. So the price on weapon upgrade scales. There's the shop. These don't though. Okay, so this also gets me a weapon slot, which realistically we don't need. We haven't maxed out the ones we have. And so, you know, it's nice. It's not particularly important. Yeah, I'm just going to keep looking for shops here. Armories are stinky and I don't want them. Items are good. I was really hoping with that credit drop chance. We'd be able to... Uh, farm a lot more money off of foes, but alas, it doesn't seem to be the case. If you're wondering why I'm opening the armories, it's so I can get rid of them. So they're not on my HUD. But this is purchasable only once. Game lying to me. I got two weapon slots, and I'm going to be able to do nothing with them. And that's okay. keep going for the regen, I suppose. 
Reason being is mostly just, uh... I don't know what the boss is going to be about. Son of a... Oh, actually, we have a shop. Okay, I'm going to keep going for those credit refunds. Uh, I have nine of them. Which makes me hope I've got a 90% discount. Yeah, I pretty much don't lose money. Rad. Okay, execute any enemy on hit. And yeah, those bounty boxes are going to keep me busy. Let's see. Regen? Yeah. Just run down. Uh, let's see. Regen? Regen. Perfect. I didn't see a shop there. We don't have too much time. Armory. Armory. Oh, got a magnet. Yeah, I could potentially clear those kind of quickly, but I don't think it matters that much. Uh, I'm just going to keep going for the, the weapon damage scaling. I think that caps at 250, no matter how many of those upgrades you get. How long is my range? I have no idea. Well, time to go kill a boss. And by kill a boss, I mean just run around as normal. Ooh, item? Oh, it's a long survive. Sure. I'm just going to keep looking for every blue that I can get. I guess we should probably start going into armories in retrospect. Uh, attack damage? Oh, yeah. This costs me almost nothing. Oh, projectile count I can't afford. Now, what level am I? Level 66, so I should have some extra weapon slots. Okay, uh, let's just go for the detonator. Unfortunately, I'm going to be attacking so far away that, uh, Half of my enemies are going to be dying off screen. Means I'm going to be bit missing out on a lot of rewards here. But that's okay. At this point, I don't think it matters. Okay, so it looks like my discount caps out. I guess let's go hang out near one of the uh, enemy kill... ...totems. Oh, interesting with those red nests, actually. marked on the map or the map the HUD we you cannot touch me I am spin it is interesting like we started this with my shotgun being functionally useless to me and now we've reached the point where uh, boy the shotgun is absurd I guess I should probably actually just point myself in one direction so it's easier. What is going on with my character? Wait, am I facing one direction but I've got my gun pointed in the other? That's amazing. I should probably turn around and kill these guys before they touch me. But yeah, my, my gun was super garbo when we first started this. And I was reliant on the laser wheel to keep me alive. It has flipped pretty hard since. Okay. Yeah, up to 90%. That shop discount is goofy. Let's see. I don't think I need this. 
Let's just go for the marshal. Okay. Anything else, really? No, pick these up. See if I can go find a shop. Hope I can maybe find a magnet, but I have no idea what magnets even look like. Oh, well, there we go. It didn't really help me, though. So despite the fact that I'm supposed to get those extra weapon slots, uh, I'm not gaining them. That's a bit of a downer. I was really hoping I could mix in one extra weapon here. Maybe it's because I was past level 50 when I first picked it up. That's like the only explanation I can think of. What? You think you can prevent me from leaving? That's funny. Oops. Where's the boss in this? I don't know. I'm just going to go kill everything else. Oh, there he is. Let's see. 10% attack damage chance. Yeah, it's constantly just kind of surrounding me in more goons, so I cannot escape the boss. I guess I should probably focus fire it down. I do like the enemy design, though. Like, they're kind of just flopsy-dopsy weirdo alien critters. But they're still kind of original. I'm sure I'll go for the 15% damage increase. Let's go over here. 10%. Kind of a crit chance? Kind of a crit chance. Oh, boss teleports. Good to know. Boy. I think this is supposed to be threatening. It's, uh... Mostly just comedic. Here's the question. Oh, yeah. You know the whole execute enemies on hit that I was just stacking up this entire time? Turns out that includes the boss. I was wondering about that. It's why I was investing kind of hard into it. I'm really curious about that 10% enemy on ten, with a 10% chance or whatever. I'm pretty sure I've gotten that up to like 100%. What happens if you go over 100%? Does the damage boost ever get be better? I have no idea. It doesn't really matter to me. I would love to see this game be better at com about communicating these things. Oh, there's something in this rock. I think. Um, mostly on merit of... Uh, there's minimal feedback on, like, how things are going and what anything specifically does. I'm clearly winning by merit of having an absurd gun. I mean, it costs me nothing to buy, so I might as well. Yeah, purchasable only once. There's also a bunch of those little design oversights, like the extra weapon slot after reaching level 50 but you can only buy it once but also i've bought it three times now and none of them have done anything because i'm pretty sure uh i was over cap and it can't figure it out uh and so i'd love to see this game get a little bit more polish but i think my big one is the side weapons are really boring and the gun just scales in a linear fashion it can get pretty absurdist like, don't get me wrong. But... I guess I don't really care? If everything just scales linearly, then it might as well not scale at all. After a certain fashion. Yeah, that was the extra projectile for all of my, my side weapons. Which is supposed to be purchasable only once. Um, and like it is satisfying specifically seeing like the laser wheel around me and the, the laser boomerangs being bigger and my gun shooting that much. Like, I, I'm not exactly, or I'm exaggerating a little bit in terms of uh, it not being worth it, but it's one of those where, apart from 
big identifying how to cheese this game. I've had kind of minimal agency on this run. More or less every single choice I've been given was just buy everything uh, or the order in which I pick things up. And that kind of didn't matter very quickly because of how powerful I got. I'm sure on the harder difficulties that will matter. Um, but it's part of the reason why like branching upgrade paths or um, like evolutions matter. Because then there's some some level of intentionality. You know, what if my laser boomerangs were firing uh, laser wheels? Like they were, they were bigger and surrounded and maybe had a bit more range. Um, I literally just don't think I care. I don't know why I'm pursuing them. It means nothing to me. Uh, just some degree of control over my build beyond just picking what upgrades. Usually it means like A and B options. Those, those are big. Uh, let's see, 5% EXP booster. I guess let's buy the first level and... Oh, wait. First two levels and everything. I guess let's start with the first level and everything, then work our way up. Even the meta progressions, it's there. It's not strictly bad. Uh, but it's not wholly exciting. I think it works fine, especially if you want to have a game that is just like big and flashy. Uh, I'm just going to keep going for the magnet range because that actually seems pretty useful. So what else have we done? Have we unlocked? We've got a new guy. Oh, look at this big chunky lad. Looks like he's got a minigun and no access to the Meltan. I think it just needs a lot more time in the oven just in terms of like new weapons and equipment. Uh... New weapons and equipment, new, new ways to kind of upgrade your character over the course of a run. Rather than linearly, give me a bunch of options that are either A and B options where one of the two disappears for good. Uh, or like weirdo options that only show up rarely but are really cool. Uh, so for example, switching my spread fire gun into a singular bullet that gets bigger the more projectiles... Uh, I would normally have been firing, so in, instead of five uh, separate shots firing out in a spread, I'm firing a bullet that is five or even ten times larger with uh, five to ten times pierce. You know, all of a sudden, that that difference, uh, that choice, makes a huge difference in, in what makes uh, a bullet heaven more interesting. Um, I'm going to be on a kick for this because we've got a whole bunch of bullet heavens to get through. And I feel like a lot of bullet heavens miss this specific le uh, lesson. That agency isn't just players playing the game. Agency is is giving them some level of, of customization in what they do. Um, and especially considering the slots were so small. And we had the kind of weapon families. The Brutal, Exorcist, and Saboteur. You know, some of that matters. Uh, but in fact, I'd actually even argue the... Um, the upgrade families kind of work against you in terms of agency because you're almost encouraged to pick them up, uh, which pigeonholes you further rather than benefiting your gameplay uh, by being like a more freeform system or just not caring at all. It's kind of why I picked up the knives, the um, grenade launcher, and oh, right, and the laser wheel because they all got the extra projectile from that one upgrade. Whereas there's a very clear alternate summoning build that has a very clear specific upgrade tied to it as well. And I actually find upgrades like that limit you down a little bit because they only benefit like a certain subset of your weapons. And so you're encouraged to only carry that specific subset. I, I don't know. I'm I, I'm pretty sure the dev's going to hear some of this and hopefully take some notes. Uh, so I'm just dumping some feedback at the end. If you guys want to as well, like, feel free to either uh, pop in my, my comment section with your own ideas or also just get involved with the game. So many of these bullet heavens uh, have, like, a really fast update and iteration uh, pace. And so I find uh, feedback actually is reflected in them quite well, quite easily. And so it's one of those where I dump a lot more feedback, especially because I know a lot of other Bullet Heaven developers are watching this. Uh, so anyway, with all that said, if you guys want to pick up Survivors of the Dawn, it's available now on Steam. And it is also a, it's on Steam because it just uh, released today. It's also as part of the uh, Steam Bullet Heaven Festival, uh, which is going on also today. Here, let's switch this up. 
So it is kind of an eclectic mess of every single generally and genuinely good Bullet Heaven ever made. It's definitely missing a couple, uh, or quite a lot, but it's got a lot of, like, upcoming ones. Uh, some that I'm like, mm, I'm not quite sure if this is exactly a Bullet Heaven. Bullet Purgatory, maybe. A really good game. Uh, and then a lot that are much more, like, standard. Renfield, for example. There's also, like, Kill a Million Rats, which has base building, which sounds really cool. Uh, and so there's a whole bunch of them that are either out already, coming soon, some of which have demos, some do not. Uh, there's a whole section for demos. Yeah, here we go. So there's a demo for Slime 3K that came out last week. Uh, demo for a lot of these. And, like, some are really good. Like, Death Must Die, absolutely incredible. Probably the best bullet heaven I've potentially ever played. But that might just be me. Nimrods is a close second. Uh, yeah, another Zombie Survivors is satisfying. Holy smokes, that's got a lot of reviews. People really like that game. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to leave a link in the description below, both to Survivors of the Dawn and the Steam Bullet Heaven Festival. Uh, so you guys can go check out both. But with all that said, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.